What's good, y'all? <sighs> I know, I know, I have not recorded in a while. I want to say it's been at least a week. There's been some interesting things that's happened in the wrestling world, and uh, I've been slacking. I wouldn't say I've been slacking, but on this channel, I haven't been uploading as much as I need to be. Um, main reason is I've been busy with the main channel, been trying to get videos out with that so me and dub we've been recording like hella crazy so a lot of times when i get home i'm tired after coming home from work after editing recording with him i don't even get a chance to like real record for my main channel so i'm gonna try to work on that definitely i'm not gonna get to 6k with inconsistent recording schedules so I'm going to try to work on that, but I actually want to bring a different type of format to you guys. I want to know if you guys prefer reactions to like wrestling clips throughout the week or you prefer straight commentary on different wrestling events or or different things that happen during the week, AEW or WWE related. And that's what this video is going to be. Me just giving my thoughts on just some of the... Uh, the noteworthy moments of this week when it comes to wrestling and just have a little conversation with you guys i was gonna do a reaction yesterday but i had to work on a video when i tried to screen record it didn't work and it was getting too late so i was like screw it i'm just gonna try something different so comment down below if you want reactions or if you prefer like a commentary type video like this one so Let's get started with how uh, Raw kind of kicked off the week. Once again, I want to give this disclaimer. I really don't watch all of Raw or SmackDown. Only shows I really watch for the most part all the way through. I may skip parts here and there is AEW and NXT. I didn't really watch Raw because I don't really care to watch Raw because there's not much on there that's worth watching. But I did see the clip where Seth Rollins finally turns heel. I don't know how long they plan on holding this off, but he should have been heel honestly after the uh, the Bray Wyatt Hell in a Cell match. He should have been healed in. Honestly, if you're going against Bray Wyatt in a feud where they wanted to see him as the champ, no matter who it was going to be, they were going to be heel. So, they should have turned them heel in. It, it was getting real cringy with his promos and just his antics outside the ring on social media. It was just really cringy. He was coming off as an asshole. And I'm glad that they finally turned them heel. The promo that he delivered, you can tell... That's how he feels. I don't think it was overly scripted. It was a good promo. That's how he feels. He feels like the fans have turned their back on him. And in a sense, you can say that. But at the same time, WWE has been booking him like complete dog shit, to be honest with you. They haven't really booked him as a guy that I want to see overcome the odds. When he won the championship against Brock at this past WrestleMania, even though he won it in like a cheap fashion, people wanted to see that because people were tired of the universal championship being held hostage and then he had just a mediocre title reign because they kept putting him against baron corbin and people that you didn't really care to see and then he ended up losing the championship to brock lesnar because of a money in a bank cash in which still makes no sense today why they would take the title off just to put the title back on them and then they tried to go with the sympathetic role of this guy is getting destroyed by brock lesnar to try to get the title back and no one cared they also was forcing down the Becky Lynch, Seth Rollins, like, relationship. They were forcing that down our throats. It, it, it just came off cringy and annoying. And then his promos got so lame. That burn it down. That That's cringy, bro. I, I can't even do the voice. Like, I'm, I'm tired of hearing that. It, it works better if he's a heel. I don't 
I don't believe anything that's coming out of anybody's mouth. They're talking about burn it down. No, sit down somewhere because this it's lame. It's not cool. So I'm glad that they turned him heel. It'll be interesting to see what he does with AOP. He's better as a dominating heel with a, t- a faction. Even CM Punk said it on the, the the show they have on FS1. He's better as a bad guy. He's not that entertaining as a good guy. He's much better as a bad guy. So we will see where things go with him. Somewhat interested. I know TLC is this Sunday. Do I give a fuck? No, because I just, I don't really care about TLC. I may check out some highlights. If something noteworthy happened, I will definitely comment on it. I'll definitely talk about it on the channel, but I just don't care. So, yeah, that's what happened on Monday Night Raw. The only thing worthwhile is him turning heel. Now, let's get to the greater things, like the, the better things that happened this week. So, NXT, enjoyable, as always, as it usually is. I want to say the main event was really, really good. Keith Lee versus Finn Balor versus Tommaso Ciampa. Very entertaining main event match. I main event yeah, well, 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 What was that? Very entertaining main event. I can't even talk. Main event match. Um, to decide who will be the number one contender for the NXT Championship, and I believe that is next week. That match is next week. So. Finn Balor gets the win. I was surprised. I didn't know if they were going to give it to Finn. I actually thought they were going to give uh, Keith Lee the rub because right now, surprisingly, Keith Lee is one of the most over things in WWE right now. Like, people want to see him. The crowd is chanting, oh, basking his glory. He is athletic as hell for somebody that big. And people are loving him, so I thought it was going to be him, but they gave it to Finn Balor. I'm looking forward to that. I don't know if Finn's going to win. I mean, I would be shocked if he did, but I don't think he's going to win the match. But I don't think he's going to take a clean loss either because he's kind of going on this heel run that works. So... I don't know if they're going to give him a clean loss. I think it's going to be a screwy finish. So we will see how that plays out. But that's going to be a very entertaining main event match for next week. You also got Shayna Baszler versus Rhea Ripley for the Women's NXT Championship. Once again, I don't think she's going to lose that title. I know. I think it's going to be a screwy finish. I think those type of matches, even though NXT, they do switch titles on like on a on a just a regular weekly show they have been known to do that i just i'm not i don't see it because these are very nxt takeover high quality matches and i feel like if there's going to be a title change it should be at a takeover but i could be wrong i'm looking forward to next week because that's going to be entertaining as hell so i can't wait to next week to see who comes out victorious on both of those high class high caliber matches AEW, another entertaining show i enjoyed it this week um i want to say the segment that i enjoyed the most well i did enjoy that uh texas street fight match that was actually pretty enjoyable they did some pretty insane spots there that was a good match um between the uh who are they called I really can't think. <laughs> I'm not cutting that. I know their names. Uh Santana and Ortiz and uh um I I can't they I know who they are. It's just you would think I would cut this out, but I'm not, man. I'm I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I know who they are. Who are they? Who are they? Don't 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 nobody tell me who are they. Uh, uh I can't think, bro. I can't I can't think. A few moments later. The Young Bucks. I'm so stupid. You know what? This is the end of the video. I didn't even know their names. I knew their names, but I couldn't even tell you. I need to leave. So thank you for watching the video. I appreciate all the love and support. And I will see y'all on the next one. Peace. No, I'm serious. I'm Nah, I'm 
I'm just playing. But yeah, uh, I had to figure that out. But the Young Bucks, Santana Ortiz, uh, very entertaining match. Very entertaining tag team match. Um, and basically, that was the number one contender match to see who would face SCU for the AEW champ, uh, Tag Team Championship. And I must say this, I've said this before, and I'm going to keep saying this. AEW, for the most part, have the better looking championships. Their Tag Team Championship belts look beautiful. WWE Tag Team Champion belts, both sets of them, look like goddamn toys. I hate them. That's just a side note. Chris Jericho, basically, was trying to recruit John Moxley to be part of the inner circle i like that segment and he was just like hey man just think about it so it, it it's i like how he comes to him with trepidation like join us because he knows and everyone else knows if there's anybody that can take that championship from him storyline wise it would be john moxley so we'll be interesting to see what john moxley's response will be like in that little storyline like there um and then also mjf gave his response to cody rose amazing promo last week and uh this week uh he had a pretty good promo himself he knows how to heal it up that's what makes him a great heel he had his little punch lines as well it was very enjoyable i must say uh mjf He's he's looking like a, a real true star when it comes to just character building. And once again, I'm going to keep saying this. AEW allows the talent to just be themselves on the mic promo-wise. And I love that. I think that's dope. I think more... I think more companies, wrestling companies, definitely should allow that talent to give them that free range when it comes to the microphone. And most of them do. The only company that really doesn't is WWE. And we're not even talking about NXT because I feel like NXT, they give them a little bit more control over their character. But the main roster, fuck no. No, here's a script. Go buy it. It's so annoying. It's so lame. It's only a hand few of wrestlers that get that privilege to just go off script. But uh, it makes for a better product character-wise. It makes people get invested in your storylines if you're believable. And I want to see that match. So we will see what MJF stipulations will be for that match. And I'm looking forward to it. So those are just some of the highlights that uh, I've noticed so far this week. I probably won't be able to check out SmackDown tomorrow because I'm going to be hella busy recording for the main channel, but I'll try to check it out, uh, get my thoughts and opinions. If there's an interesting clip, uh, I'll probably maybe react to it. That's if you guys want me to. So I said at the beginning of the video, if you want me to react to certain clips throughout the week, let me know or if you prefer this style of commentary on the channel let me know i want to figure this out going into the new year because at the end of the day i want to give y'all good content and i feel like reactions are cool but i already do that on the main channel it's my personal channel and you guys like my wrestling takes and i just want to give my personality through the videos so if you guys prefer commentaries let me know if you guys prefer a reaction let me know or if you want like a mixture of both we can do that as well so i appreciate y'all kicking it with me and i'll see y'all on the next one peace main events matt